Thank you very much for your introduction. I'm Mikiko Kainuma from uh, IGS. And uh, uh, when I, uh, IAMC, this meeting or a consortium started, I worked at NIS. And I'm very happy today uh, to see many friends here. And welcome back to Tsukuba. So uh, I explain how Asia integrated model called AIM has been used for the analysis of climate policies in Asia. So AIM has a good network, not only in Asia, but also US and Europe. We had the 25th M International Workshop at Nice last month. Uh, uh, Director Watanabe already mentioned. And we had many Asian members, and as well as the uh, uh, friends from US and uh, France, including Jay. And we have developed the integrated assessment and their long-term uh, strategies and the long-term ca uh, carbon scenarios with uh, Asian collaborations. This supports uh, domestic as well as international policy making. So uh, I'll introduce briefly uh, our AIM activities. We started AIM project with Professor Morita and Professor Matsuoka in 1990, and uh, started collaboration with Asia Institute in 2004 after we developed the first version of the Japan Endless Model and had the first AIM workshop in 1995. We started a low carbon society project in 2004 and low carbon society research network we call LCSRnet. Uh, this was established in nine, 2009 under G8 scheme. So lo local net, this is a low carbon Asia, Asia version, Asia network started in 2012 that focus on the policy analysis in Asia. As uh, this is already uh, explained by the NIS president, the Center for Climate Change Adaptation uh, was uh, established at NIS under the Climate Change Adaptation Law in December 2018. Now we focus more on the linkage between mitigation and adaptation, including SDG-related activities. We have also conducting IPCC and UNEP Global Environment Outlook and other international activities. So AIM consists of three uh, main models, emission, climate, and impact adaptation models with additional models, such supporting models such as population and AFRI model. First, we developed the endless model. Then we started to develop a global model, and we have developed an economic model. For the dialogue with policymakers, simple account model has been uh, developed. For estimating temperature increase, we use a simple climate model. We have developed several impact and adapt adaptation models. By combining uh, emission and impact adaptation models, synergies and trade-offs of climate policies on SDGs have been analyzed. This is the way how we uh, develop models and uh, communications with policymakers and other stakeholders. Core research models has been developed, studied, have Core research members have developed study tools and models. These models are shared with other members through activities such as training workshops. Each country researchers have developed low carbon society scenarios and roadmaps by collaborating with stakeholders. To date, using AIM, the collaborative researchers have developed and published several uh, locally tailored scenarios and policy roadmaps toward LCS through their own initiative at both national level 
and a uh, local level in cooperation with policymakers in each region. So this is an example of a locally tailored scenario published as Low Carbon Society Blueprint for Iskandar Malaysia 2025 using AIM model. They propose 12 actions, five actions for green measures, economy, two actions for green community, and four actions for uh, green environment. They also proposed 281 programs for implementation. These actions and uh, programs have been implemented by Iskandar Regional Development Authority. This is now actually an uh, uh, ongoing project. And we have uh, published books and papers. In 2017, Professor Fujimori did to publish post-2020 climate actions. This book assessed 2030 emission reduction targets by MCG Global and six national models, including China, India, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, and Japan. So uh, there are, these are the examples of primary energy supply under several scenarios each country model. So the authors of this, these uh, papers are here. So if you have more detailed questions, please ask them directly. And the Chinese scenario design, uh, uh, scenario design considers two dimensions, the stringency level of carbon uh, constraint and the availability of low carbon options. The results show low carbon technologies in power and end use sectors, as well as the low carbon style consumption play important roles to uh, reduce emissions. The India team also analyzed NDC and two degree cases. The results show actions like the penetration of renewable technologies and use uh, demand management and improved energy efficiency need to be enhanced to meet the two degree target. Two scenarios are developed for Indonesia a baseline scenario and a countermeasure scenario, which assume the NDC target, that is 29% reduction by 2030 for the energy sector. Land use plays an important role in Indonesia, though so the combined analysis of land use and energy sector is important. Four scenarios are analyzed with greenhouse gas emissions, constraints and renewable power generation target in, in Thailand. The availability of land for developing renewable energy need to be evaluated in more detail to meet the higher greenhouse gas emission reduction target. These are scenarios focused on two degree target, but after uh, the uh, Paris Agreement, we focus more on the 1.5 degree target. So this another uh, example of led by Professor Masui and published by Carbon Management in 2018 was focused on 1.5 degree target. So uh, we uh, 1.5 degree scenario uh, are developed uh, in China, India, Thailand, Japan, Korea, and Nepal. The teams <coughs> developed this. So I just, uh, because of time constraint, I just introduced uh, one shin a scenario developed by a uh, Japanese team. So this figure shows an example of energy system trans uh, transformation analysis in power sector in Japan with m this model. Uh, these figures show electricity generation under the difference and 1.5 degree scenarios. For 1.5 degree scenarios, we have two categories. One is to pass the NDC target in 2030, and the other aims directly to the 1.5 target, where introduction of renewables will accelerate it uh, much more compared to the uh, NDC sc scenario before 2030. And the other case is to analyze the nuclear phase out. In nuclear phase out scenario, renewables will be much more introduced. 
So uh, the Japan's uh, uh, policy activities are already explained, but I'll explain uh, the uh, scenario uh, with, uh, with I explain scenario uh, related to the, our uh, modeling activities. So uh, let me introduce briefly history of climate policy in Japan and analysis with AIM. At the time of COP3 in 1997, we announced that Japan can reduce greenhouse gases emissions by 6% in 2010, based on the analysis with M and this model. However, this was criticized by many people, especially from the business side. But now we are taking a, uh, talking about net zero emissions by 2050, and many business people are very uh, positive to find ways to achieve net zero emissions. So the uh, world is changing now. In 2008, the next uh, progress was started to de decide the mitigation targets in 2020 to submit to, to the COP15 held in Copenhagen. At that time, we used the three models, global technology model, Japan technology model and the Japan economy model to provide the mitigation options. Of course, the final decision was done by the politician and prime minister, uh, Mr. Aso at that time, decided 15 reduction compared to the 2005 level. In nine, 2009, uh, Dr. Yukio Hatoyama Prime Minister at that time announced the 25% reduction compared to the 1990 level at the UN meeting. The role of model was to show how to achieve this target. Unfortunately, in 2011, we had a great East earthquake and Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident. The new mitigation target in 2020 was to decide decided to be 3.8% reduction compared to the 2005 level and announced at the COP19 in 2013. The target assumed the uh, net zero nuclear power generation and if nuclear resumes our operation, this target will be reconsidered. In 2015, new mitigation target, 60 26% reduction in 2030 compared with 2013 level was endorsed by the cabinet. This includes 20 to 22 share of nuclear power. So in 2016, cabinet decided 80% reduction of greenhouse gas in 2050 compared with the uh, present level. In 2019, Japan submitted a long-term vision to UNFCCC, which proclaimed that a decarbonized society as the ultimate goal and assuming to accomplish it ambitiously as early as possible in the second half of this century. The, the current Japan's long-term target is still a vision and not based on the model analysis, but I hope the, and I'm sure the IAM activities can help to make it a uh, roadmap, to, to make a roadmap toward decarbonized society. So we have done many workshops and policy dialogues, including 11th LCS Annet annual meeting in Rome and 8th uh, local net annual meeting in Beijing this year. At the local net meeting, we had presentation of the three IPC special reports, SR15, SR Climate Change and Land, and SR Ocean and Cryosphere, and from uh, lead authors. And Greenhouse Gas Policy Analysis Asia from Asian collaborators. We also did policy dialogues with Bangkok. Professor Bundit, uh, he was there, uh, organized the workshop, and we continue training workshops. 
So IPCC SR15 said the, that limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius world require rapid, far reaching, and in unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. Achieving transformation is a challenge. We started LCS project in 2004. At that time, our main objective is to show the pathway toward low carbon society by leap leapfrogging development in Asia. But now our goal is a decarbonized society. So finally, I'd like to introduce my recent activity. Uh, that is to uh, convey the messages of IPCC reports. We interviewed several lead authors of IPCC special reports. Unfortunately, IPCC report was uh, not well known in Japan because there is a big uh, language barrier. So uh, we interviewed the lead authors and translated in Japan. And this is again translated back to English. Uh, you can see uh, more uh, interview de detailed uh, information on this website. So Jim's message is the next 10 years are key to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But now, one year has already passed, so we are now uh, remaining here in the next 90 years. And uh, uh, recently, we inter interviewed uh, Professor uh, Enomoto. I was really scared by what he ex explained. More than 90% of excess heat is absorbed by the ocean, which is wake opening up the sleeping giant. Sleeping giant is Antarctica. Uh, scientists have warned about the risks of climate change for decades. However, earlier they were also uh, criticized for having no clear evidences. Fortunately or unfortunately, theories of climate change are now verified by facts. Antarctica has been said to be a sleeping giant. The mass of its ice sheet is very big, 10 times bigger than that of Greenland. So if it melts, it will cause a big problem. But it is said that the ice sheet will not melt in this century. Recently, however, an Antarctic ice sheet collapse has been observed. The top ice sheet not melted initially, but the bottom of the ice sheet is melting by climate change. As a result, the ice sheet floats, becomes unstable, and flows out into the ocean. The Antarctic ice sheet increased until 2016, but then began to decline, with some estimates that the amount of ice uh, melted in the Antarctica during three years, 2016, 17 and 2018 is bigger than that, the amount of ice melted in Greenland in 30 years. Climate change countermeasures have been discussed based on the precautionary principle, but in practice, if observation data are not available, it is difficult to move the policy makers to action. However, reality is that it will be too late to take actions to stop climate change after the theory uh, uh, about it completely proved. I'm sure that the integrated assessment model community can contribute to show the sustainable pathway before it will be too late. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mickey Jones.